Praise the Lord, everybody. It is good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. As we always say, it is the day that the Lord hath made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you to our worship service here today. We thank God that we have another opportunity to come together and break the bread of life. May God be glorified, his kingdom be magnified, and I know that all is well with you because our God is still in control and our God is still on the throne. Turn with me as we go into the word of God today to the book of Judges, the sixth chapter. The book of Judges, the sixth chapter, we'll be reading from the first verse through the six verses today. The book of Judges, the sixth chapter, reading from the first verse through the six verses today. And the scripture reads, and the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Midians for seven years. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel, and because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them dens which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. And so it was when Israel had sown that the Midianites came up and the Amalekites and the children of the east, even they camped up against them. And they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth till thou come to Gaza and left no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep nor ox nor ass. For they came up with their cattle and their tents and they came as grasshoppers for the multitude. For both they and their camels were without number and they entered into the land to destroy it. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. The word of God is a blessing to those who hear it, understand it, and are obedient unto it. If I would have a title for the sermon today, it is, This Harvest Will Be Different. This Harvest will be different. Here we have the story of Gideon, and many of us are familiar with the story of Gideon, but today we're going to take it from a different angle and, 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 and examine how the Lord got to the place, amen, where he began to minister unto them in reference to the harvest. We have the Midianites, which have a strange relationship with the children of Israel. As you read the history you'll find out that the uh, Midianites was also a tribe, and they say that they are some of the descendants of Abraham. But their relationship with the children of Israel, amen, sometimes it was a friendly relationship, and sometimes it was a volatile relationship. And the Bible says that the children of Israel, they were out of fellowship with God at the time, meaning that they were in a stage of disobedient unto God, and because they were in a stage of disobedience, the Bible says that the Lord allowed the Midianites to come in and to buffet them and to try them. Now, here we have a situation where the Midianites, the Bible said, they would come in during harvest season, and what they would do when they came in during harvest season, that they wait till the crops mature, and they will come in and they will take all the crops away from them. Anything that they had grown, anything that, that, that was on the vine, amen, they stole it. And any, any, anything they stole, amen, and didn't take for themselves, the Bible said they destroyed it. It said when they came during the harvest time, they even, they even killed the sheep and, and the ox and the asses. So when they left the land after the attack, the land was desolate, and the children of 
Israel were in poverty. The children of Israel were in poverty. The Bible says in the next scriptures, if we will read the seventh uh, verse, it said that the children of Israel began to cry out unto the Lord because of the problem that they were having with the Midianites coming in and taking their harvest from them. And the Bible said when they cried out unto the Lord that the Lord had mercy on them and God began to turn the tides and began to minister back unto them and to give them the means of being self-sustained once again. But as we read the story, I want us to pay attention of how God moved by his spirit in reference to their plight and how God answered them and how the harvest that God began to give them, amen, it wasn't the same type of harvest that they were used to. And as we read the story and go through the sermon today, you'll find out that there are times when we are used to the harvest being a certain way and we are used to being blessed a certain way. And oftentimes God will step in and God will, will change the dynamics of where we get our blessings from and how we get our blessings in and what he blesses us with and the position he puts us in to be blessed. And the point I want to make today also is sometimes, you know, God will come in and God will change the dynamics of our life. Amen. Especially when it comes to us prospering and us bringing wealth and riches into our life. What God does with the children of Israel, he changes the way that this harvest is. Amen. And that's why this sermon today is this harvest will be different. You know, since uh, March, when the country announced, fully announced the pandemic and the problem with the um, coronavirus, and they began to shut the country down. You know, after we were shut down for at least two months, you know, March and April, amen, I started to get people to call me up and begin to talk to me about the year in reference to um, the theme we have for this year and how I came in the beginning of the year and I proclaim, you know, that, 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 that 2020 shall be the promise of plenty. And that was, that was our theme for this year. And we came together on New Year's Eve, and I tell you, amen, we preached and we shouted and we danced that it is the promise of plenty in 2020. So, you know, being that, you know, I, I, I'm always pronouncing that I'm a prophet, you know, <laughs> and I'm a pastor, and I'm a teacher, then people start calling me and says, hey, I thought you said that the Lord told you. How many of y'all know that's how people are? That's why if you're a prophet, you better prophesy what the Lord says. Make sure it's the Lord and it's not you. Amen, because if not, people are going to come back and say, I thought you said God said. And so people start calling me up. They was like, hey, hey I thought you said that, that this was 2020 and it is the promise of plenty. I say, yeah, that's, 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 that's what God told me. He said, well, 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 how long is this pandemic is going to last? I was like, well, look, you know, I don't have that information. I, I don't know how long the pandemic is going to last. I don't really know the ramifications that it is going to cause. I don't know how many people that's going, life is going to be interrupted. I'm, how many people will lose their life during the pandemic? The only thing I know is that God spoke to me and said, amen, announced that 2020 would be the promise of plenty. I say, now, 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 this is what you can do, amen. Hold on to what God has said, amen. How many of y'all know that all that we could do in times like these is just hold on to what God has spoke into your life. And I found out that a lot of people who thought the um, pandemic situation, that it was going to be short term, amen, that in, you know, like two or three months, you know, we, we'd be through the pandemic, we've had, we'll have a vaccine, and 200 million people will be vaccinated by now, and we'd be back to our normal lives, and everybody will, yeah, 
and, and we still have a situation, especially here in Miami and South Florida. We still have a situation down here. As a matter of fact, they're, they're calling that at one time that we were the epicenter of the disease. So, so down here in South Florida, you know, we've been challenged a lot when it comes to the virus. So people begin to question, says, you know, Pastor Green, you said, God said, that it'll be, it'll be the year of plenty in 2020. Somebody told me the other day, they said, well, 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 maybe it is a true prophecy because it didn't say plenty of what? You just said that it would be the, <laughs> you just said it would be the, the promise of plenty in 2020. They said, I, I, I think you meant many troubles and many trials and many tests and many sorrows. I say the devil is a liar. That I don't believe that's what God was telling me. Amen. I believe that what God was telling us was this, that in the midst of anything, he would still be doing plenty things. Come on, somebody. And all of us who are still here, our testimony is, amen, so far we have survived, amen, everything that's been in the land. And that which have come upon the land might have affected our lives, but those of us who are still in the land of the living, we still got something to sing about. We have something to shout about. We have something to be glad about. We have something to rejoice in reference to. And the point I want to make today is that the Holy Spirit was dealing with me this week and says, I want you to preach on harvest. I'm like, okay, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preach on the harvest because I know that you are the Lord of the harvest. And if anybody can bring a harvest, God, you can bring a harvest. So I'm not going to be intimidated, amen, by all of you who are asking me, where is your plenty? Sit tight. You've been getting it the whole year. Come on, somebody. You've been getting plenty the whole year because we've be actually been in a state, amen, of somewhat of a famine. Amen. Not just here in the United States, but all over the world. So, so look, amen, God has still done a lot for you in the midst of what has been going on. Now you see why God says, amen, I give you a promise of plenty in 2020 because you were going to need God to do plenty for you if you were going to survive, amen, what the pandemic has brought into our lives. So here, let's get to the story today. I had to lay that little foundation just to let you know that some people think, amen, that God, that we can't prosper in the midst of famine times, that we can't prosper, amen, even when we're, we're in flood waters. If we read our Bibles, amen, we'll already know that God can do what men say is impossible, amen, all things are possible with God. We serve that kind of God. Don't give up and don't give out and don't give in. But we're going to study that God is creating a different kind of harvest for you. I need you to say that at least to yourself or if you're in the company of someone, amen, say this, that, that there is still a harvest for me. Amen. There is, you got to believe that there is still a harvest for you. And actually, you've been reaping from the harvest all year long. Amen. It's according to your perspective and, amen, how you see the hand of God and, and, and how you're able to discern that you're still blessed in the midst of all that you've been through, all that you're going through. And who knows what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. And that is the key for us. We're going to look at the process, amen, that God changed the harvest and how he gave them the harvest. The Bible says that they had been going through a time that they could not, they could not benefit from the harvest. And that every time they fought in their minds they were going to benefit, that the Midianites came and took from them Therefore, 
they had not the means. They had barely the means to survive. This is why Gideon was complaining in the first place because he says, I'm tired of the Midianites coming in and taking away our harvest. We worked so hard, amen, in trying to, trying to, trying to plant our crops and waiting and, and, and attending to the crops and waiting till the fruit is on the vine and waiting till it's ready to be harvested. And then, God, I don't understand why you allow the Midianites to come in and take our harvest away from us. And not just that, we use the beast, the burden, to plow the fields, and then they come and they kill the beast so that when the next season for planting comes, it's even harder for us to plant because now we don't have any beasts to plow the fields. God, amen, when are you going to rescue us to the point where we are able to have our harvest restored unto us? This is their plight, and this is Gideon's cry unto God, and this is their cry unto God. Lord, do something about this situation. I want my harvest back. I want to be able to prosper because of my harvest. I want to be able, God, to live a prosperous life once again. Can you restore it, God? So God begins to deal with them as they cry unto the Lord. Now, so all of you who feel like the harvest in your life has been disturbed, the first thing they did was say, God, could you do something about my harvest, that my harvest has been damaged, and God seems like I'm losing more than I'm gaining in this particular season. God, can you make my harvest, amen, be a total benefit unto my life? Can you give me surplus, amen, in reference to my harvest? You need to cry out to God. And, and to effectively cry out to God, if you feel like your harvest has been affected, amen, first you got to stop complaining, you got to stop murmuring, come on somebody, and you got to trust God with what God has already spoken into your life, you got to trust God with the promises and the prophecies that he's already spoke unto you, and you got to hold on to God's unchanging hand, and you got to believe God in the midst of any and everything else, and I don't care if you're down to your last dime, I don't care if there's no more food in your refrigerator or your pantries or your cupboards, I don't care if you've been laid, laid off or furloughed or fired. You need to know that you serve a God that has all power and all authority. Stop your complaining and begin to trust God all over again. They started out with saying, God, we have no other source, and we have no other resource but you, God. And, Lord, only you can fix this situation. We got to tell God that, Lord, I trust you, and I know that only you can straighten this thing out. Only you can see me through. Only you can restore and revive and renew and regenerate, God. Only you, God, can bring us up out of this valley place. Only you, God, can do what men say you can't do. Only you, God, can come down with your mighty hand and still minister unto us in the midst of whatever's going on in the world. So the first thing you do is stop complaining and begin to pray and cry out to God in faith and say, God, I know you're able. I know you're able. It's one thing to sing a song. It's another thing to live a song. It's one thing to say the word, but it's a whole other thing to live the word of God. The way you make the word of God a living word is you say it by faith and you hold on to it by faith. Hallelujah. This is why Jesus said, the words I speak, they are spirit and they are alive. Make your words that come out your mouth in reference to what you believe that God can do. Make them alive because you say them by faith. Don't say them in desperation. Do not say them in frustration. Say them in faith, and you make them living words. Some of you all, you need to learn just how to trust God completely. Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting silence in here today. You need to just learn how to trust God completely. So the first thing, cry out to God. When they cried out to God in the right way, you know what God did? 
God began to give them a strategy. And this is what God would do. When you approach God the right way, God will begin to give you a strategy. Now, here they cry out to God. God begins to give them a strategy. And the strategy was this. Watch this strategy now. The strategy was this. He tells, he tells Gideon, he says, now, now look, I'm, I'm going res- to rescue you all from the Midianites. He says, but Gideon, what, what I need you to do first, after you, you've already prayed, y'all already cried out, amen, I'm going to answer your prayers. He says, but everything that represents pagan worship and idol worship in the land, you need to get rid of it. This is what I'm saying today. Amen. He says, the first thing y'all need to do before I move and give you this brand new harvest, everything that's in your lives that represents, amen, idolatry and the worship of pagan gods and pagan things, you need to get rid of it. And so Gideon goes out and him and, and some, of his, some of his little fellow friends and everything, and the Bible says that they go and they tear down all the orchards and they tear down all of the, uh, uh, the idol worship of worshiping Baals, amen. And when the people got up in the morning, they said, who in the world tore up all the idols and tore down all the statues and everything? And then somebody said, it was Gideon and his boys that did it. And they said, we're going to kill him. And so they went to kill Gideon for tearing, tearing down all the things that represent idol worship. And then his dad came, his father came out and said, what are you here to do? They said, we're here to kill your son. He says, well, for what? He said, they, him and some of his friends, they tore down all the idol worship and all the statues and everything we had set up to worship Baal. And then his dad says, well, I'll tell you what. Let's do this. Now, since you claim your God is so mighty and so powerful, amen, let your God, since he tore down the statues and all the idolatry that that represents your God, let your God kill him. Amen? Now, if your God kill him, then okay, it's all well and good. Say, but I'm not going to let you kill him since you claim your God is so mighty. Let your God defend his self. I like Gideon's father, don't you? Come on, somebody. And look, look. And so the Bible says they walked away. So I'm telling you this. God says, the first thing you need to do is stop depending on other gods. What I want you to do, because I know you're not worshiping other gods. I know that you don't do any idol worship. I know you not, you don't, you don't uh, dabble in having statues in your house and praying to statues that represent this and represent that. I know that the Christians I'm talking to today, you know, you're not burning candles in your house. You're not burning any candles to get more money or cast a lottery or get a husband or get a wife. You're not burning candles and stuff like that. Come on, somebody. You're not one of the ones that, that's, that's, that's tying stuff around your neck and putting stuff up under your bed and burying stuff in your yard. Come on, somebody, to try to get this or that. You're not... You're not into your horoscopes, amen. You're not banking on you a Leo and this your season, and you a Sagittarius and this is your season. You're a Pisces and this is your season. You're a Taurus, and if a Taurus hooks up with a Capricorn, then that's how it's supposed to be. I know I'm not talking to people like that. I know I'm not talking to people who believe in superstition, amen. You're still throwing salt over the shoulder. You still not stepping on cracks on sidewalks. You still make sure you don't walk up under ladders. You make sure, amen, that if you see a black cat, you don't let a black cat cross your path. Amen. I know I'm not talking to a people who believe, amen, in good luck and bad luck because we don't believe in stuff like that. Amen. We don't believe in idol worship. Amen. Our trust is in the Lord. The Lord is our provider. He is our Jehovah Jireh. Come on, somebody. This is the one. You know, all the rest of the stuff, if I've named some of this stuff and and it applies to you, 
if you want God to change the way your harvest is come in, coming in, you got to get rid of idol worship and superstition and all these other things you are depending on for blessing. Either you're going to depend on God to bless you, amen, or go ahead and worship this other cockamamie mess. Hallelujah, anyhow. Preach it, Pastor Screen. I'm preaching it, baby. And all y'all who got children in the house and the children's like, Mama, you know, when you're going to get rid of that candle, you know what Pastor Screen say? I hope they, I hope your children do get on you. Say, Mama, one Pastor Screen talk about that? You still reading your horoscope, Mommy? Oh, let me, let me get on with the sermon because y'all getting ready to get upset now. So he told him, say, hey, get rid of all the idle stuff in the land. God say, I'm not going to be in competition. Look at what God said. God said, if you want me to bring your harvest, amen, the, men, the reason me and you got out of fellowship in the first place is because you were depending on other things other than me, amen, to sustain you and to bless you and to minister unto you. That's why I left you to yourself in the first place. He says, now, there's going to be a brand new harvest that comes, but I need you to clean it up just a little bit. I, ne I need you. How many of y'all know the Bible said that God, the God that we serve, he's a jealous God. God refuses to be in competition with all this other stuff in the world, all this other stuff that people can invent. Amen. If you buy this, if you buy that, if you try this, if you try that, let me tell you something. Just straight up believe that God is who he says he is and get rid of all the rest of this stuff. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So he said, get rid of the stuff. And this is part of the strategy. Remember, we're talking about the strategy. This is part of the strategy. It says, get rid of all that stuff and then I will begin to move. Now look here. Look here. Now, the Midianites, watch this, and this is what the devil will do when God begins to move. The Bible says the Midianites, when they, came, when they came to get rid of the harvest, to steal the harvest and destroy the harvest this time, that they brought the Amalekites with them and others. When the enemy, this is the one I'm saying today, when the enemy sees that you're serious about getting in right relationship with God, and he knows that once you get in right relationship with God, that God's going to release the harvest in your life, the Bible says the Midianites came and they bought the Amalekites and they bought others with them. And they had so many soldiers until when they looked in the land where they were staged before they attacked the people of God, it looked like they were grasshoppers. There were so many in the camp. So God says, look, do not worry about them. Do not worry about them. They've come for the harvest. They come. Look at when God began to move. The Bible says that it was harvest time. And they had come again in order to take the harvest away. Because it was harvest time, God says, don't worry about it this time. Because I'm going to step in and I'm going to do something different this time. And this time, the end result is not going to be the same. So they are there. The enemy is there to take the harvest away. They pray to God. God intervenes. God says, Trust me and me only. And God tells them this, and we know the story of Gideon, but God tells them this. He says, look, I'm going to give you a strategy that's going to seem strange. When God gives you this unusual and unlikely harvest, he's going to give you a strategy that's strange, and it's not going to seem like the strategy is going to work, but it is going to work. God tells them, first of all, you know the story of Gideon where he starts out with, I believe, what, 32,000 soldiers, and he winds up with 300 soldiers. He says, look, this is what the strategy is now that you have the 300 soldiers. He says, uh, I want you to get some lamps and get some trumpets. Now, let me tell you something. You know, if you're trying to overcome an enemy, that has tens of thousands of soldiers, and they have been defeating you for years, and God says, give everybody a trumpet and give them a lamp. 
take away all the weapons, <laughs> but just give them trumpets and just give them lamps. Leave all the rest of that stuff home. Leave your shield home. <laughs> leave your sword home. Leave, leave your armor. You don't have to be marching, amen, with all that armor on. Leave all your armor on, off and leave that armor home. All I want you to do is show up with a trumpet in one hand and a lamp in the other hand. Let me tell you something. This next harvest, God's going to tell you to do something, and it's not going to make sense, but it's going to bring prosperity. Listen to me today. It's going to bring prosperity. Come on, somebody. It don't have to make sense to you. All you have to do is be obedient unto God. So watch this. He tells them, says, look, I, I, I need you just to get some trumpets and get some lamps and then just go where they are, where they have encamped themselves. He says, go where they are. And he says, surround the whole place that they are. Take the 300 soldiers and stretch them out over miles of land and just encircle around about them. So they get there. Gideon brings the trumpets and he brings the lamp and he gives the soldiers the trumpets and the lamps. I can imagine the, the, the soldiers saying, you know, we with you and everything, Gideon. But from what I hear, it's like tens of thousands of the enemy. What's with the trumpet? And, and, and what's with the lamps? And we can't take our swords and we can't put on our armor. I mean, what, what is going on? Gideon said, this is what the Lord told me to do. And see, this is what you got to start telling people. And don't be ashamed and don't be embarrassed. If you don't believe, ain't nobody else going to believe. Come on, somebody. Come on. And so I know that Gideon, Gideon told him, say, it is what the Lord, read it. Gideon say, it is what the Lord told me. And Gideon said it like, and what? And what? And what? I know when the Lord is speaking to me. How many of y'all know when the Lord is speaking to you? When you know when the Lord is speaking to you, walk in the confidence of the strategy that God is going to give you in this time where the harvest is being attacked. So they get there, and God tells Gideon, he says, I want you and one more person to go into the camp of the Midianites. He said, dress up like a Midianite, you know, and look like a Midianite, and go into the camp. Let me tell you something. You know, a lot of times what God is going to do he going to send us in the camp of the ones who have what we need. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me today. Y'all don't hear me today. He'll send you into the camp of the people and the enemy that have what you need that's been attacking you. Now, the Midianites, look at what, what was going on here. The Midianites, the richest that the Midianites had is the riches that they stole from the children of God for years. So actually, the spoils that they had was the spoils of the people of God in the first place. There's some stuff in the world and some people in the world that's been taking stuff from us for years. Yes. They've been taking stuff from us for years. And what God's gonna, getting ready to do, he's getting ready to turn it. You say, Pastor Green, how is he going to turn it? I don't know because the strategy he gives me might not be the same strategy he gives you. All I know that God is saying this is going to be a different harvest. This is going to be a different harvest. So actually, God was setting them up to get back what they stole from them and to take their spoils on top of it. You talking about a double portion. That's a double portion right there. Lord, they're going to they gonna be made to give me back what they took from me, and then I'm going to get extra. I'm going to have a surplus account. How many of y'all want a surplus account? You know, surplus means you got more than enough. God is getting ready in this season, 
in this time, he's getting ready to give us surplus. Getting ready to give us surplus. I don't preach nothing that God don't give me, baby. I know what I'm talking about. Amen. So, so God says, go into the camp and just sit around and see what I've already done. Watch what God does. So Gideon and one more, one more of his soldiers go inside the camp, and they just blend in. There's tens of thousands of them, and they just blend in. And, it, and the Bible said one of the soldiers had a dream. And the soldier was telling a group of other soldiers, say, I had a dream last night. So the Midianite uh, soldier says, well, what, what was the dream that you had? He said, I had a dream that, 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 that a loaf of bread was on top of the hill. And the loaf of bread started tumbling down the hill. But when the loaf of bread got into the camp, the loaf of bread rolled over everybody in the army and killed everybody. He said, that's the dream I had. There was a man in the midst, and the man said, I know the interpretation of the dream. The Midianite soldier said, well, what's the interpretation of a dream like that? He says, this is what was revealed unto me, that the dream meant that we are going to die by the sword of Gideon and by the hand of God. What God, you say, what, what, why would God tell Gideon? go into the camp so he can witness what the Midianites having a dream and the dream being interpreted. And the Midianites, Gideon had just started to be a soldier. Just this in the beginning stages of God calling and choosing him, but the Midianites had already heard about it. Let me tell you what's going to start happening to God's people. Before you get there, God's going to already fix the hearts of people. Before you get there, God is going to already have laid out all the footwork that have to be done. See, in this harvest, you'll find out that there's not going to be a whole lot of fighting, and there's not going to be a whole lot of struggling. And there's not going to be a whole lot of suffering. Oh, you don't hear me today. God said this, oh, this harvest is going to be different because you're not going to have to work that hard to get it. Somebody say, Pastor Chris, what are you talking about? You're going to walk up on a blessing. You're going to walk up on a miracle. You're going to walk up on some stuff. People are going to start to come to you. you ain't, you're not going to have to chase somebody down for this and chase somebody down for that and beg somebody for this and beg somebody for that. Amen. It's going to start coming to you like the Bible said. If you cast your bread upon the water, not many days hence, it's going to come back to you. This is the kind of bread that's coming to God's people. You have already thrown your bread upon the water. You have already sowed into the kingdom of God. You have already paid your tithe. You have already given an offering. You have already did your kingdom work. God said it's time for a return. It is time for a return. It is time for a return. They say it is a sword of Gideon. And it is the hand of God that's going to help him. Say, when he comes, we won't be able to stand again. God has already made a way. Tell somebody, say, God has already made a way. God has already made a way. Say it. Say, God has already made, way, made a way. Tell, say this. Say, no stress, no strain, no struggle. Oh, you better mean it. Say, no stress, no strain, no struggle. Oh, I can't hear you. You ain't saying it like you mean it. Say, no stress, no strength, no struggle, baby. Say, this is going to be a different harvest. This is going to be a different harvest. It's going to be a different harvest. Gideon walks out of the Midian camp with faith, confidence, and hope. And he goes back and he tells them they are already defeated. You say, well, Pastor Green, you know, maybe that was just one story. 
Not really. Not really. When Joshua got ready to take Jericho, the Bible says that Rahab the harlot told the spies, once they said, we are the children of God, we are the Israelites, Rahab told the spies, say, the reason that Jericho is shut up is because they are fearful of you all and they are intimidated by you all. Say, we have the most fortified city in, in all of the area. There is nothing, our, our city is impenetrable. But when they heard that the children of God was coming, amen, they shut the city up. They shut the city up. So look at here. God had already spoke to the people in Jericho that the people of God was coming. And Rahab the harlot told the spies, say, look, the city is shut up because they heard y'all was coming. Because they are afraid of you all. God had already prepared Jericho to fall. God had already prepared. And this is why God told him, says, once you get inside Jericho, God told him, say, save all the spoils for me. Save and dedicate and consecrate all the spoils for me because God knew, amen, that the city would fall in and the city, the walls would fall in and the city would be conquered and there would be no fight. When they marched around Jericho, amen, it's the same scenario. God hears their cry. He gives them a strategy. If you follow the strategy of God, God begins to give you the spoil of those, amen, that, he, that is needed in order to fulfill that which God has promised in your life. Somebody say, what is God doing at this point? Let me tell you what God is doing. God is positioning himself in reference to your condition. Y'all yeah, yeah, yeah. don't hear me today. God is positioning himself in reference to your condition. Whatever your condition is, God is getting in position. And he's getting ready to do something. Amen. Somebody, what he's getting ready to do, I don't know. But I tell you what, he already been doing stuff in my life. I've already seen the signs. Come on, somebody. How many of y'all have already seen the signs? You say, Pastor Green, amen. I don't know what everybody else is going through. I don't know what everybody else, have, how everybody else has been attacked. Say, but look like God is turning some things around for me. Amen. What I thought I was going to have to go through and what I thought I was going to have to face, actually, it's become easier than what I thought it was going to be. And while they're doing a whole lot of stuff to some more people, amen, I've been spared. God is positioning himself, amen, in reference to your condition. So the Bible says that they follow the word of God and they follow the strategy of God. Don't worry, I'm not going to be up here long today. They follow this strategy and, and the Bible says, well, let me, let, me, let, me, let me say this before I go on. When it comes to the strategy of God, I want you to do these three things. When it comes to the strategy of God, Wait until God speaks, listen to what he says, and follow him. It's easy. It's easy. When God gives you a strategy, wait until God speaks, listen to what he says, and then just fully follow him and fully be obedient unto him. Come on, somebody. Yeah, that's all you need to do. This is why it's going to be easy. This is why God will speak, you know, just like, you know, he spoke to Jehoshaphat and the children of Israel, he says, look, he says, the battle is not your battle. It's my battle. If you're going to give it to him, then give it to him. Amen. Amen. If you're going to give the situation to God, then at least wait till God speaks and then follow what he says. Come on, somebody. You know what's wrong with a lot of us? We don't wait until God speaks. Amen. Wait till he speaks. And when he speaks, just follow what he says. Remember, it's not going to be that hard this time. No stress, no strain, no struggle. You need to write it somewhere in your house. Put it on the refrigerator. I frequent the refrigerator a lot in my house. Put it on the refrigerator. All y'all who stay in your bedrooms a lot, put it on the bed, uh, bedroom mirror. You know, put it on the mirror. 
They'll put it on the bathroom mirror because a lot of us stay in the front of a mirror because that's, you know, so we can look like we look. Come on, somebody. Put it on the mirror. Amen. No stress, no strain, no struggle. Amen. Make that your mantra. Make that your mantra. Amen. So you can remember it. Because I don't want some of y'all listen to the broadcast today and we go rah, 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 yay, yay, yay. And a new harvest is coming. And then two weeks from now, you say, what new harvest? You know, that's what happens in the church a lot of times. We have a big old Holy Ghost pep rally. Oh, God going to do this. And yes, God going to do that. And, and God's going to do a miracle. And God's going to bring us this. And God's going to do that. Well, and we go through all that stuff. And then a month later, we back depressed. We back complaining. We back murmuring. We back saying, well, woe is me. And God, remember me, Jesus. Remember me, God. My light bill do. Remember me. My water bill do. Remember me. I got to pay my rent. Remember me. Baby need a new pair of shoes. Remember? No, nah, we ain't going through that no more. No, we're not going through that anymore. No, 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 no. 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 We're not, we not going to cry ourselves to sleep at night. No more. No, we, we, we're not going to be worried. If you're worried, don't pray. And if you pray, don't worry. Come on, somebody. So look at here. He says, I'm going to follow you, Lord. I'm going to do exactly what you say. They do exactly what God said. They surround the enemy. And the Bible says, for Gideon, you tell them to blow the trumpet. And when they blow the trumpet, then... Follow my instructions and the enemy. I'll deal with him and I'll give you a new harvest. Watch what happens. They get on the top of the hill, they surround them, they do exactly what God says. The Bible says that the Midianites and the Amalekites and the others turn on themselves and begin to kill each other. No, you don't hear me. See, that's why. I told you, no stress, no strain, no struggle. Because the enemy going to stop fighting you and begin to fight somebody else. Oh, y'all don't hear me today. He's going to stop fighting you and begin to fight somebody else. Hallelujah. This is what's going to happen. Yeah. Now, the Bible said they turned on each other and they fought and some of them killed each other. The Bible said the rest of them begin to run. So Gideon tells the 300 men, says, hey, let's pursue them and let's run them down. Now watch what happened. The Bible says they run them down until they run out of room. The Bible says on the way while they're running them down, amen, Gideon tells Ephraim, the tribe of Ephraim, help us chase these Amalekites and these Midianites, help us chase them down and chase them out of the land. Gideon said, because we're getting ready not just to take the spawn. Listen to what he said. He said, we're getting ready to take their land. So we're not going to just get our stuff back, and we're going to take their stuff. We're going to go into their land, and, and we're going to prosper by the same method they was prospering. No, you don't hear me today. You don't hear me today. This is going to be a brand new harvest. Amen. It's not going to be a harvest like you used to. The way God does it is going to be unconventional. Amen. The strategy he gives you might not make sense to you. But there's a harvest that is here for God's people in the midst of the pandemic. In the midst of everything that's going on. It is harvest time. It is harvest time. It is harvest time. I want you to read this scripture. And I want you to clearly understand what happened. Judges, the 8th chapter, and the 28th verse. Don't worry. I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. Judges, the 8th chapter, and the 28th verse. I'm going to give you some time to get there because I want, I want this, this verse and this chapter to be your banner during this pandemic. I want it to be your banner. Judges, the 8th chapter, 
and the 28th verse. This is what it says. Thus was Midian subdued. Now, the Bible says that Gideon did not kill them. He was not out to kill. Remember, through this whole process, the people of God, Gideon's army, killed no one. Read the whole story. We don't have to become hostile. Listen to me today. We don't have to become hostile. We don't have to become vindictive. Yeah, we don't have to become violent to get stuff. Hallelujah. Amen. We're not going to have to pull out guns and try to shoot somebody and take something. That's why I told them, leave your sword home. Leave your shields home. Leave your armor home. I'm not going to send you out as killers. I'm going to send you out as my people. And I'm going to show everybody that we don't conquer people and kill folks. And the only reason we attack you, God will attack you, is that you attack his people. But his people are not going to go out as killers. Come on, somebody. The Bible says that they chased them down and they subdued them. That word subdue means to take control. The Bible says what Gideon, what God gave Gideon and the children of God the power to do is to control the people who used to control them. Listen to me today. This is what the Bible says. Thus was Midian subdued before the children of Israel so that they lifted up their heads no more. God says, I'm going to fix it. Well, whoever's been taking away your harvest and whoever's been destroying your harvest, whoever's been delaying your harvest, whoever's been denying your harvest, God says, you will not have to deal with these harvest killers anymore. Look at what he tells the children. So you're not going to have to worry about them coming back and taking the harvest ever again. Matter of fact, amen, you're going to take their harvest and you're going to take what they stole from you. Glory to God. And the country was in quietness in the days of Gideon for 40 years. Now, the Bible says, after this harvest comes, that peace comes. After this harvest comes, he says the whole land becomes quiet. How many of you know when you can pay your bills, you got peace? When you got extra money in the bank, you got peace. When you got the means, amen, to have more than enough, you got peace and quiet. Come on, somebody. Amen. God says, I'm going to fix it where this harvest is going to bring quietness and peace to your life. Yeah, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And he says, this is going to go on for 40 years. 40 years is a what? 40 years represents a what? A generation. 40 years represents a generation. God says, what I'm going to do with the harvest? He says, you're going to have 40 years. A whole generation going to be taken care of. You know what that means? That means you're going to have enough to leave your children. You have enough to leave somebody something. God said, I'm going to fix this generation so that they can bless the generation to come. This is going to be a harvest like no other. I want you to write these three things down. I'm, I'm, I'm about to close in five more minutes. I'm about to close in five more minutes. I want you to write these three things down that this harvest is going to do. 
three things down that this harvest is going to do and what it is. Okay, you ready? You ready? Okay. This is the three things I want you to remember about this harvest. First of all, it's going to be obtainable. Obtainable. What is going to characterize this harvest? It is going to be obtainable. What does the word obtainable mean? The ability to be acquired, received, and secured. Whoa! That means nobody going to come rob you of this harvest. They ain't going to be able to take it. Amen? It's going to be obtainable. The ability to be acquired, received, and secured. This is something that other people said you wouldn't get, but you're going to get it anyway. It is going to be attainable. If they, if they say, no, you'll never get this, God will say, yes, you are going to give it to them. And yes, they will get it. Yeah, yeah, this kind of harvest is going to be. The next thing this harvest is going to be, it's going to be retainable. Retainable. The ability to continue to have or keep possession of something. I'm going to be able to maintain it. If God says that I'm to have a jet, then I'm going to be able to maintain it. If God says I'm going to have a mansion with 23 rooms in it, then I'm going to be able to retain it. I'm not going to have it, and then they're going to repo it. I'm not going to have it. God going to give it to me, and then, amen, I, I, I'm going to default on the mortgage. No, 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 no. I'm not going to have something, amen, that, that the people are going to come pick it up because I ain't paid on it. It's going to be retainable. It's going to be retainable. The things are going to be retainable. The last characteristic of this harvest is that it's going to be sustainable. Write it down. Sustainable. Sustainable means to sufficiently support or strengthen for an extended period of time without interruption. My God, my God. It's going to be sustainable to sufficiently support or strengthen for an extended period of time without interruption. They're not cutting on my lights no more. They will not be able to cut my gas off. They won't be cutting my water off. I will not default on loan. Oh, y'all don't hear me today. No, 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 no. It's going to be sustainable for an extended period of time without interruption. What are the three? It's going to be obtainable, retainable, and sustainable in the name of Jesus. For the conclusion, I told you I was going to be finished in five minutes. You didn't believe me. The conclusion for today's sermon and today's lesson, for some of you, it may seem like every time there's a harvest available, the enemy comes to deny us or delay it or destroy it. But this time there is a harvest that shall last and a harvest that shall be a blessing unto you. What was the title of the sermon today? This harvest will be different. Give the Lord a praise offering today. Give the Lord a praise offering today. And say out loud, there's a new harvest coming. 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 In the name of Jesus. Come on and give God some praise. Come on and give God some glory. Come on and honor him today. Come on and magnify him today. We ought to praise him just because we made it this far. We ought to praise him because he didn't forget about him. We ought to praise him because he's brought us from a mighty long way. We ought to praise him because what we've been through, hallelujah, it didn't kill us, it didn't destroy us, it didn't make us discouraged, we will stand and above all stand in the midst of all and everything. God, I believe that it's harvest time. In the midst of this pandemic, it's harvest time. In the midst of this trouble,
it's harvest time. In the midst of this suffering, it's harvest time. In the midst of all that is upon us, God, you've already made a way. You've already made a way. God, we walk. We walk in your promise today, God. We thank you for the prophecy that have gone forth. And Lord, we shall hold fast. We shall hold fast to that which you have spoken unto us today. And God, we receive this word from you, God. We receive it from you, God. And we believe it, God. Lord, as we peer 